Apache newspaper chain filed for bankruptcy that affects the state's largest newspapers and shines another light on the decline and future of local papers. Joining us for more on that tonight, Barry Saunders, former longtime columnist for the Raleigh News and Observer, and Alexander Hudson, Novak journalism fellow and freelance writer with Young Voices. Good to see both of you. Say thank you so much for joining us. You've been writing about this, about local news outlets in general, and calling it a, a story of death and rebirth? That's right. There is a sort of lesser told story of hope. Um, it's easy to look at the, 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 the stories about, you know, things like McClatchy uh, fi filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and, and think that's the full, full, full part of the story. But there's actually a, an enormous amount of creative civic energy, of innovation, of uh, problem solving happening at the grassroots level ac across the country. And I've been studying this trend, um, you know, for a number of months now. And, um, and, and that's a story of hope. I, 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 in an essay I just wrote for Quillette, uh, I told the story of Tim Swarens, who is a, a journalist here in Indianapolis, where I'm based, for at the Indianapolis Star for over three decades, and all of a sudden was let go surprisingly last uh, last year uh, for the same reasons, uh, for the same financial reasons. He was a casualty of the same uh, you know thing kind of challenges that McClatchy is dealing with, um, and he thought his career was over. But um, instead, he realized he could be part of the solution, and he's currently leading uh, a team of citizen journalists trying to figure out what the future of local news in Indianapolis is going to look like, uh, realizing that the Indianapolis Star cutbacks are are leaving an important gap uh, for government transparency and civic yeah. engagement. Um, and, and so he's he's not sitting idly by. He's studying other successful models of kind of new startups across the country and, and trying to establish what could work for the Indianapolis context. And that's, that's a story of hope. Isn't part of this too, I mean, we have generations of people that now have grown up only with the internet and have had for the most part everything free to them. And so finding a business model for this is challenging, right? It is challenging, but um, there are there are people across the country who have proven to be up to that challenge. There are there are many of these sort of new outlets that are experimenting with with the new models, uh, new new business models. Because as we talked about, the old models that 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 uh, local and regional outlets relied on for almost 200 years, you know, relying on classifieds, um, advertising dollars, and subs subscribers, those those can't be relied on any, anymore. Which is again why we're kind of in this situation. Um, so outlets such as the Voice of San Diego, the Min Post of Minneapolis, the Texas Tribune, the Colorado Sun. Um, these have all been been found in the last five or ten years, and um, they've all adopted a nonprofit, subscriber-based, all online model um, to try and keep costs down and reporting high. And and they've kind of taken an approach where um, they try to convince subscribers that um, to, to treat their local paper like they would, um, you know, supporting your your local symphony or something like that. That yeah. it's a Public good that you're supporting, um, and in supporting uh, local journalism, as you said, it's it's so important and very resource heavy to uh, to have these in-depth investigative projects. But they're so important. I mean, um, Jeffrey Epstein might be alive if if the Miami Herald hadn't broke that story, or think of the Boston Globe and the and the Catholic Church sexual abuse scandal, um, and and the Indianapolis Star here in here in Indiana broke the the story of Larry Nassar um, and his abuse at uh, USA Gymnastics. So it's it's very important, and and it's it's encouraging that that um, people and, and new institutions are rising um, to to be a part of the solution. Uh, nationally, uh, for local news, particularly with TV or newspaper or even radio, it's not a way to get rich, and nonprofits not that way. So is it a natural fit, maybe? Yeah, I mean, it's important to know, and Barry made this important point, that, if, you know, national outlets, the New York Times, the Wall, the, the, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, they're thriving <laughs> right now. They yeah. have flourished in recent years. If you look at, at their, um, you know, revenue numbers and subscriber numbers, they're doing very well. Um, and, and I think that the, the temptation as these local and regional outlets, as they face these financial struggles, is to uh, uh, syndicate, is to, is to um, uh, put more nationally syndicated content on their pages and, and, and on, their, on, on, their, on their segments. But, I mean, the downside of that is that it, it, it really has contributed to the polarization in our country of our public discourse, where often, and this is another part of my research, I've learned that often the local experience does not match the national experience, and, 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 the, and the lived experience of everyday Americans doesn't live and die by, you know, the daily, the, the daily tweet or, or, you know, scandal of the news cycle, and that things are generally much better and more, more hopeful at the local level. 
level. But when these outlets are are syndicating national content more and more, it gives this impression, at least this, this impression at the local level, that um, that things are worse than they really are. Um, so that's another another problem to keep in mind. Yeah. Well. Let's hope we can all find uh, solutions, because if there's one thing we do know, local news is very, very important. Good to see yes. you both. Thank